we're on plan B now. If you guys happen to notice all the cherry shavings all over, it's because the first project that I worked on today uh, went sideways twice. I put a tenon on it and the tenon cracked and then I put a mortise in it and the mortise cracked. So we're gonna try something else now, which also may be a failure, but I'm at least gonna try it because I have this peach piece of um, It's got this really big bark inclusion. I cut some of it out already. So what I'm gonna try to do is make a hollow form, but I'm gonna put it between centers and I'm just gonna come in from the sides to see if I can keep this feather figure that's gonna be in here, or at least see what's in there. I, I don't really know how it's gonna go yet, but that's my plan. So I'm gonna... Put it between centers. Figure out what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna start making some chips. That's what I'm gonna do. Actually, I'm gonna put it on here and kind of balance it out. No, I'm not. I think this is soft enough. I'm just gonna put it on here. which case I can probably whack a good section of that off. This would be better straight. And probably I can come about like this. Whack this part off and then it'll be a little bit more balanced and I think I still will end up with what I want left in the middle. We'll see. One moment, please. I could probably have started turning this a lot faster than I did. I have a tendency to turn on the slower side. I always have. This piece is a lot more wet than I thought that it was. You can see I'm getting a lot of spray up on my jacket. I'm stopping a little more often than normal and kind of checking my progress because I don't want to cut through whatever figure there might be, and I'm not exactly sure where it's going to be if there is anything. Alright, well, it isn't as interesting as I had hoped it was. Get this trued back up now that it's on its final mounting thing.
Whatever kind of poplar this is, I imagine it's probably white poplar. It's cutting really nicely, and I'm getting a really great finish just off of the spindle roughing gouge, but it stinks. And that's how I know it isn't aspen, because aspen does not smell like this. This smells more akin to, like, cottonwood or something. Screws to here. I have a lot of trouble with the Morse taper on my drill chuck not seating well in the quill. So what I usually do is I put the drill bit or whatever I'm going to use in there and then I lock the tail stack down and then I press the whole shebang up against the workpiece and then I assume that that is going to help that Morse taper get seated but it did not help a whole lot with the Forstner bit. And you can see that's what I just did here with this three quarter inch drill bit, which is just on its own Morse taper. My dad gave me a whole bunch of these drills that have a Morse taper two on the end. That's probably close enough. I did the bulk of the hollowing with just a standard round carbide and then I came back with my Lyle Jamison hollowing rig and cleaned it up and you know got the walls down to the final thickness. This just saved a lot of time because the cutter's a lot bigger. I cut the majority of this out because this video really is about the dyeing and finishing process more so than the creation of the thing. Okay, um, I finished hollowing it out and I changed the shape just a little bit. I'm going to have to cut it off probably right about here, I think, is where the screws are going to be. So, um, shape-wise, mm, whatever. But I sanded it up to 320 on the outside. The inside's still a little bit wet, so... But I want to try some dye on this. Um, I have some trans-fast dye, colors turquoise, mixed. I've got three grams in eight ounces of water. This is water soluble dye. And I am I already uh, wet this down to raise the grain and then just hit it with 320. So I am just going to try really hard not to dump this all over everything. See what happens. I've done a couple of things with with this dye. Uh, this one isn't finished, but this is on aspen. And so the color did come out pretty turquoise. Uh, I did another thing, I'll put a picture up, um, but that was on a piece of maple that was pretty yellow. And so that went more of a turquoise green than a turquoise blue. So we'll see what we get with this. What I'm hoping is that it's going to accentuate the little bit of curly and the little chatoyants and whatever other cool things we've got going on here. So, um, gonna give it a go. Poplar is a pretty soft wood anyway, and I think that dyes tend to absorb more unevenly in softwoods than they do in hardwoods. And you can see as I go along here and, and put the dye on, that at some points I go back over places that are, are really light, and it won't take any more dye. So that's just all that it's going to absorb due to whatever. I don't 
I don't know why, something about the cell structure maybe, but you know, the end grain is going to soak it up a lot more than the side grain. And then anything that has figure or where there was a branch coming out is going to absorb it differently than all the rest of it. So I'm just trying to get an even coat as far as application. It's not all going to absorb evenly for sure, but I don't want any thin spots or spots where there's less dye than others. A little too much. Rotler. I'm probably going to let this sit overnight and dry. And then I don't know what. I may I may sand it back a little bit and put on another coat. I may sand it back a little bit and not put on another coat. Um, you know, I expect that it's going to absorb unevenly, which is part of the reason that it makes some of the grain stand out. Um, but we'll see. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? All right, I'm gonna quit messing with that and I'm gonna let that dry overnight and we'll have a look at it tomorrow, see what we think. It's dangerously close to time to feed the beagle. All right, so I'm not sure at what point I'm gonna cut this video back in because I have completely redone the finish. Um, I sanded it most of the way back and then I reapplied the dye because I got most of the way through the other one and then I tried to throw the thing across the room which was not helpful and I decided to just start over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a CA glue finish on and then I'm going to buff it. Um, you know, I, I don't mind the uneven absorption of, of the, the dye it actually looks kind of cool right here. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. It's dry. And uh, some of it's probably going to run when I put the CA glue on it. Even though it shouldn't. This is water-based dye. And I, I bought that particularly so that I could use it with shellac. But the shellac pulls the color up. And it pulls the color up after the color has been dry for three days. You're supposed to be able to top coat this in a half an hour and it just does not work out for me. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, the Transfast dye that I'm using comes in a powder and you mix it with hot water. And uh, it's made by Homestead Finishing down in Ohio by Jeff Jewett, who's a um, pretty well-renowned wood finisher guy. Uh, I may end up having a call down and be like, all right, what, what am I doing wrong here? So we're going to be using um, Starbond Thin for this. And I want the lathe to go as slow as I can get it. 140 on this gear I think will be fine. Otherwise, we're going to fling CA glue all over everything. A lot of people use uh, CA glue finish for the smaller projects, but it actually looked nice on this, so I'm going to do it. Um, one of the guys that I follow on Instagram, and he also has a YouTube channel. Um, his name is Daryl, and he is from Dreadnought Workshop. Um, he, he did a big earn with this, and, and it came out really nice. So I shouldn't have any trouble with this size thing, but this is me we're talking about, so who knows. So I'm going to dribble and because it dries pretty quickly you can't use the same part of the paper towel.
So it all looks pretty uniformly grungy. <laughs> and we're gonna wet sand just a little bit, except that I think I have a couple of spots right here where I don't quite have the same amount of glue. And because we're gonna sand, we wanna make sure that we have enough enough coats of this, enough layers, so that we don't go all the way through the finish when we, when we wet sand. And then just one more little bit right here. I have several coats of thin Starbond CA glue on there, and I am going to wet sand this so that it looks uniformly scuffed, and then I'm gonna buff it and try not to drop it. Some abrasive paste before I buff it just to see it might not be necessary but I don't know if the Tripoli e is gonna get that spot out or not so let's see what we can do with some abrasive paste I'm gonna be able to turn this up very fast because it's on the jam chuck and it's pretty wobbly but because this isn't the tongue wax I don't have to get the speed up super high I just need to get all the residue from the abrasive pastes off and it's actually better if it if the lathe is going slower and I can keep contact with the front here it did warp some but it didn't crack so I'm good with that okay that's coming back pretty clean let's see what we got here yeah I'm gonna go ahead and do brads which is a little finer and then we'll buff let's see if we get the surface that I want here. It's very likely that the abrasive paste step is not necessary and that if I'd just gone straight to buffing that it would be fine. But since I'm already redoing this, <laughs> um, I kind of just want to err on the side of hopefully it just looking good and I don't have to do anything else to it, so. All right, now we're gonna try this again. So the other good thing about the about buffing it with the uh, Beal system, <coughs> excuse me, or any other way that you were going to go about doing that, 
is that um, you can hold the piece instead of having to have it mounted on the lathe. So if you have already parted your tenon off or your whatever your holding mechanism was, it's not a disaster. The little washer guy on. So this is the Beal system, B-E-A-L-L -L buffing system. Eh. Get on there. Why don't you go on there? Eh. Okay. This is the adapter for the lathe. You can use these on a grinder. Okay, and I am gonna start with the triple E wheel, which is the more coarse of the two mild abrasive buffing wheels and I'm going to put a little cushion here because I seem to have issues with stuff. <laughs> so I put some cork down I have my safety glasses on. This is meant to run toward you. And it's supposed to run at about 1750-ish. Somewhere like that. I'm gonna charge the wheel just a hair. And I'm gonna try like hell not to drop this. So what happened the first time is that I was trying to get more of a longer swipe up and down. And of course, then it sucked it down and threw it over there. So I'm being a little bit extra cautious not to do that this time. On to the white diamond. It's very nice that the wheels come, the buffing wheels come labeled for which compound they're supposed to have on them because you don't want to cross them around. Each of the buffing wheels is made of a slightly different material. The one for the Tripoli e is a little bit firmer than the one for the white diamond, which is a little bit firmer than the one for the wax. So they go from harder to softer as you go down the progression. Okay, last bit of this is the Carnuba wax wheel. It does not take much wax. Alright, start right there. You can see how much softer the wheel for the wax is. I obviously cut out a lot of the buffing process because it's the same thing with each wheel and this video is already getting a little bit ridiculously long, so you get the idea. 
that's more better. Yeah, I like it. Okay, now I'm happy. I gave up on trying to take any more pics because this thing is so shiny shiny that even with my light box I couldn't get any pictures without really kind of a bad reflection. Bailey and I are having some cold water therapy. It's real cold. But it's better than an ice pack. Going to be dipping our toes in the same river in a couple of weeks, headed back out to Idaho and to Bozeman, Montana for a couple of art shows. <laughs> He's such a goof. And so handsome. And now, how not to use your buffing system. Well, all's well that ends well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, y'all be safe out there.